Nathan Judo. I'm here with Wolves reporter Mr. Tim Spears. Tim, Brighton won Wolves nil. Definitely a better performance than, than Watford last week, but ultimately the same results. Yeah, I mean Nuno Nuno called for an improved performance and, and, he, and he got one. And first off, they were definitely the better team. And last last 25 minutes, it was one-way traffic. Yeah, they've had 25 shots to Brighton seven. Um, but the only stat that matters is is the scoreline. And Glenn Murray showed them how it's done with yeah. a clinical finish. That's all he did all game, right? But that's what Glenn Murray does. Um, a smart finish on the turn. And at the other end, Wolves, like I said, well, they threw the kitchen sink at the end, certainly last 10, 20 minutes. It was a bombardment. Mm -hmm. But Brighton had already had already started playing for 1 0 from pretty much the hour mark. And I didn't hear anyone around, around me moaning. That's, no. just, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. they, um, they dig their trench yeah. to narrow banks of four. And Wolves' only option was really to, to get it out wide and cross it into the middle. But they haven't got a six foot six striker to head over any of those crosses. and. They didn't create many clear-cut chances until injury time when Ryan, the ball falls perfectly to Ryan Bennett. He catches it sweetly on his left foot and the keeper pulls off a stunning save. Um, Wolves, you know, deserved a point. They'd done enough to they'd earn, they'd done enough to earn one, but they didn't get it. And it's, a, it's the same old story, I'm afraid, in terms of um, lack of goals. Mm, which, is, which, is, which, which wasn't a huge problem a few weeks ago because they were so sorry at the back. Mm. They were nicking games 1-0 or 2-0. We saw that on three or four occasions. But now they've conceded a couple of goals, and it's the lack of goals that they're doing is becoming a problem. Absolutely, and we've said time and time again that you know, of course the defence was superb, but they are going to concede goals. as the Premier League at yeah. some point. They've only conceded one today, but if you're not scoring goals, you're going to get beat. Depend, it doesn't matter who you're playing. Yeah, and they've got all the tools in their locker to, to be doing better than this. Um, so I don't know how they fix it really. I, I don't think it's a lack. I don't think it's a lack of confidence. They don't look short of confidence to me. They certainly didn't today. Uh, saw plenty of the ball, 60% possession. Then, unfortunately, their best opportunities fell to either Matt Doherty or, or Ryan Bennett. Um, and it was a combination of, of bad finishing, uh, a bit of misfortune, and then one outstanding save at the end. Um, you can say it just wasn't their day, uh, and it was one of those days. Have but, they got but, to create but, more, though? Like I said, it's a recurring thing. You, you know, you, you look at your front three today, Adam and Traore got his first league start. I don't think he did much, to be honest. No, I, thought he was, I thought he was disappointing. I, thought, I think he runs with his head down. He doesn't look up. He doesn't look up to where his men are. I don't quite understand what's going on there, um, but from a, from a front three point of view, I can't remember a decent chance they created, to be honest. I think uh, the problem for me is that they look a bit predictable in terms of their um, style of play, and uh, I wrote a piece about this this week, I mentioned it on the pod, there's a lack of alternative mm. options, you know, you knew you knew that um, if they were losing, then they'd send on Cavalera or Jota, you knew exactly what you can get from them. Yeah. Um, there's a lack of, you know, we saw three players leave in the summer, um, Barry Douglas with his set pieces, which mm. were a massive strength last mm. season, and gave Wolves another option, another route to goal. Yeah. Benikafobe, who can who can finish in the box, mm. clinical finisher, which is what Wolves lack it. Yeah. Uh, and even Alfred and Jai, a, a, a different physical presence in midfield, who can pop up in the box as well mm. and get a goal. Those three have gone. Wolves have moved on. They've spent wisely in the summer and bought some great players. But there's a little bit. Nuno doesn't do plan, plan B. We know no, that. No. But there's a lack of alternative types of options, I think, to come on and change a game. And we've seen it a lot with Wolves that when they go behind, they do struggle to get back into the game. They're very good at scoring first, controlling, mm -hmm. dictating the tempo of possession and, and killing games off. They're very good at that. But when they go behind, they're not so good at chasing games when they've got to um, kind of thread the, thread the needle through mm -hmm. the haystack or some kind of much better phrase than that uh, to get through on goal. Um, and they just lacked a bit of inspiration and a, and a bit of an alternative option. To for, for me, that's what January's for, and yeah. if, if this continues so much longer, then that, that becomes a big window. Of course, <laughs> easier said than done. Buying a decent striker in January is going to score you 10-15 goals. You yeah. know, a lot of other clubs are going after them. You know, first half, I thought the first 15 minutes they were decent, they looked threatening, they were going down the byline well, they were getting a lot of success. But in the, the day, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will, they've only scored once in the first half all season, and that's, that's, good, that's going to kill them. Yeah, and that was on the opening day of the season, uh, Ruben Nevers against Everton, so, so it's a long time ago now. Um, they, do need, they do need to start changing that, and they do need to start scoring first again, which is, like I said, what they're very good at in controlling games. They're just, they're just becoming a little bit predictable. Um, and they had a lot of, a lot of play out wide uh, in the second half, but you knew what was coming, they were going to get out wide, try and get around Brighton, um, 
and stick a cross in and try and get a goal from that. And when if, if Brighton are uh, if Brighton need a goal and they're chasing the game, then, yeah. then that's fine because you get those holes. And we saw Doherty get in behind a lot, and he was his best route to goal today, mm -hmm. and played very very well. But they need more than that. Um, because otherwise that becomes not easy to play against, but like I said, predictable to play against. You said Nuno hasn't got a plan B and people know that. Does he need to find a plan B? It's the Premier League now, do you need to have a, some, some different options? And I'm not just talking about personnel, I'm talking about formations and tactics. Well, he sets, he sets his stall out, 3-4-3. Three, three. This is the way we're going to play. I'm going to have two central midfielders that are very similar. This is what we're going to do. Are you good enough to beat us? And um, in the Championship, that work week after week, and, it's, and it's, it's done okay so far in the Premier League as well. You can't argue with where Wolves are on the table. They're still ninth. They've still made a very good start to the season. But there's far more, oh, very dark, there's far more um, tactically astute managers in the, in the Premier League that will find a way around that. So. Um, he does need he does need to change things up. I think, um, like I said, January is, is becoming more important as this goes on, and it's a sh it's a shame really um, if they're going to start start wasting the great start that they've had because they've got two very tough games mm -hmm. now. Spurs and I've, they'll give Spurs a bloody good game. Yeah, of course they will. Fantastic yeah. atmosphere, and they could beat Spurs. And there'll be some fireworks, and there'll be some lights. But Spurs Arsenal next two. On paper, on, on paper, the, on paper, you might not get anything. So they fall on the bounce. It's four on the bounce. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So they'll be down at the bottom half of the table. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's not. Yeah. It, it kind of ruins the good start that they've made, really. So um, I'm not sure the way around it on the on the training pitch because, like I said, we know exactly what we've mm. got. I, I just think that they're they're lacking a bit of an alternative option. Saying that, Watford have obviously found a decent, you know, maybe more look than judgment because they've gone and stuffed Huddersfield today. They've kept the same team. You know, Brian is their third win in a row here. Yeah. So it's, they may be caught teams at the wrong time, but at the same time, they need to find just that little bit more. What's what's Nuno had to say for the game? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen him. Okay. Well, what's the, <laughs> <laughs> well, who did you have to say? Any players? Any one players? What uh, Matt Doherty? Spoke to Matt Doherty. Which, devastated, which, gutted. Yeah, he looked crestfallen to be honest. As they all are, Conor Cody looked absolutely devastated as well. It's you can see the frustration etched on their faces as, as they left the field because they know they probably should have won this game, let alone let alone draw it. And, and Brighton had no great shakes, no. really. No. Um, a pretty in the, a pretty ordinary Premier League team, but they're very good at what they do, and they were they're extremely tough not to crack. And neither of these teams score or concede many goals, so the first goal was going to be absolutely yeah. crucial. And Wolves should have got it in the first half. You know, they were, they were the better team. They, they started really well. Like I said, Doherty was super. He had the chance of the half, missed it. Murray showed Wolves how it was done, and thereafter it was, it was a real struggle, and they just just couldn't quite get that equaliser. So um, consecutive defeats, it's un uncharted uh, territory yeah, for Wolves. Yeah. Um, it's the first time they've ever lost two league games in a row under Nuno. Next week will be interesting. You know, if they fall behind against Spurs, mm. what's the atmosphere going to be like? And expectations are so high these days amongst the Wolves fans. They are there. Most of them are expecting a top half finish this season. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how the, how the crowd reacts as well next week if that was to happen against Spurs. Um, but there's a lot of confidence in, in, in this group. I think um, they don't react well to going behind, which they need to change. You saw the 20 minutes after Brighton's goal, mm -hmm. they looked a bit loose. Yeah. Um, lots of passes started going astray. So there's quite a few things that they need to rectify. But. This is just where Wolves are at right now, right? Even when they were beating Burnley, and Hampton Palace, West Ham, they weren't thrashing them. It was, no. it was, it was close, yeah. minor details, yeah, yeah. close matches, and now it's suddenly it's flipped. It's gone the other way a little bit. So they need to rectify it sooner rather than later. Plus a Malbec on the pier. Yeah. 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 Life could be worse. Could be Fulham. Well, they're still, they're still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's pretty unnecessary. <laughs> um, they're still not ninth place on the table, and. Um, if you'd said a year ago that this is where Wolves would be, everybody would be doing handstands. Mm. Um, they're in, they're in, a, on, they're in a fantastic, they're in a fantastic position. They've got some um, some wonderful players. It's just a bit of fine tuning. Um, but Nuno overcame a lot of difficulties last season, now, and, and I'd back him to do the same again. It's just a shame that the next two games are Spurs and Arsenal, but we'll see a reaction next week, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Brighton one Wolves nil for the post-match reaction. Make sure you log on to Express the Star.